my thoughts on the Acera Garden quest, because, you know, we did a little uh, talk about it on stream when it happened and uh when people started talking about it online but i had not had uh the pleasure of of doing the quest line myself so i was watching it out of context you know uh obviously the big spoiler in there and the thing people really really weren't happy about at the time and it was it was a hot topic in the wow community i think i might be right in saying that it's less of a hot topic in the wow community now would you agree with that and i kind of feel like it's one of the reasons that it's a lot less controversial now is because a lot of people have actually just done the quest line and played it themselves. I know that I did it, and I'm actually absolutely fine with it. I felt like actually playing through the quests, it made a lot more sense, and like the permanence of the controversial thing is obviously not really permanent anyway like the thing that everyone's upset about is clearly an extremely temporary measure as a quest line as and as something to play through in the game i really enjoyed it i thought it was a really really good quest line i thought it was exciting i thought it was emotional i like there was some awesome like there was like three characters that got some really really good character stuff in it which is always nice um and i think it, it sets stuff up nicely for the future as well you know if it was like oh wait and see wait and see i'd agree that would be very frustrating but it's incredibly explicit about what it's building to you know, it's like incredibly obvious what it's building to. And they talk about it quite openly, what it's building to. And, you know, it's, it's kind of the whole point of the entire quest line in, in one sense. You know, they need to protect this thing because of what it's going to be. Uh, we will be going back to that shitty Shadowlands storyline in next pack or two. I honestly, I don't even know if it's going to take that long. So spoiler chat just for a minute here, OK? Uh, what happens is the primalists attack the portal to the Emerald Dream and they uh, put a big wall around the portal to the em Emerald Dream because they, they're kind of like trying to get the power from the Emerald Dream because they want to get the seed uh, that uh, has all of the souls of the dead night elves from Teldrassil in it, which is currently in the ground sprouting. So we see it sprout in the cinematic at a maximum. That cinematic could be portraying events from three years ago. So if it sprouted instantly, goodness knows how big it already is. That's the thing. Yeah, and, and like they lock us out there and we can't get in and we've got to get to the Emerald Dream really, really quick. And we're like, yo, I tell you who could probably get to the Emerald Dream uh, is Ysera from where she is. And so we go to the Shadowlands and we're like, yo, Ysera, we need you to get to the Emerald Dream to stop the Primeless because we can't do it. She's like, oh yeah, but I'm stuck here because I'm, you know, bound to the Winter Queen. But maybe, you know, we could swap me for someone else and, and, and that would be okay, you know, all things in balance. And then she might let me go because yeah, I agree. It's a good idea to go to the Emerald Dream and stop the Primeless from stealing the, the seed, right? Um, and, you know, there's this guy going around with you, this, this dragon dude whose son died in the fighting and who has kind of given up on life. And he's the guy that accidentally let the primalists into the Emerald Dream in the first place, etc. And he's all like, yo, yeah, I'll swap with you. Sucks being alive, man. Like, you know, I'd rather kind of be with my son in the afterlife. That'd be awesome. That'd be great. So um, they go to the Winter Queen and they're all like, yo, Winter Queen, can we swap you, Sarah, with this dude who's like very happy to be here? And the Winter Queen's like, nope. And uh, Ysera realizes that uh, it needs to be Malfurion that swaps. Um, and yeah, like Malfurion is the only one there at the time who is of a, you know, a strong enough link to like the spirit world, right? Why did Ysera go to Ardenweald after her death, but the old dragon is not admitted as a stand-in for her? Because uh, the old dragon is not a, an aspect. It's established actually in that quest line that dragons don't go to Ardenweald. Um, Ysera is an extremely special case because she's the aspect of the Emerald Dream, right? And the, the two are, are linked. Um, anyway, so everyone's on about like, oh, Mafurian was supposed to die and Ysera saved him. So now Mafurian has to take her place. It's like, that's something they say, but it's not actually the reason why Mafurian goes in there. It's just because he's the only one literally there at the time who is a powerful enough, like, nature spirit, as it were, to go to Ardenweald um, and, and take her place. 
So it's not even like Malfurion's the only person on Azeroth that can do it. It's not even like Malfurion's the only person on the Dragon Isles that might be able to do it. It's like Malfurion is the only person in Ardenweald who isn't dead right now who could swap places. <laughs> Like, I feel, I feel like the, the, the circumstantial kind of situation hasn't been really played up enough in this. Um, in that, you know, we're in a hurry. We've got to get Ysera into the Emerald Dream uh, with us so we can defeat the Primalists, because it's the only way for us to get into the Emerald Dream right now. Um, and, like, you know, there's one person, th there's, like, me, Tyrande, this dragon dude, and Malfurion... And th those are the only people available who possibly could swap with you, Sarah, because we're the only ones here right now. And yeah, Malfurion's the one. So it's not like this grand fate thing. It's just like there were four of us there, and he's the best. He's like the biggest connection to nature. So yeah, it's him. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, because he's been in the dream for ten thousand years already. Exactly. Exactly. And and so it really is just like a, a, a heroic moment, really. And like. It doesn't seem like it's permanent at all, honestly, as well. Like, that's, that's the really important thing. It's clearly not a permanent trade. Um, to the extent where, genuinely, I would not be surprised if he is out by the end of the expansion. Like, I think it's far, far more likely he'll be out next expansion. I, I definitely don't think it'll be any longer than that. But I genuinely think that it's possible he'll be out by the end of this expansion. And the reason for him going in there, apart from, you know, within, like, the, the, the mechanics of this particular story and the situation of getting Ysera out of the Shadowlands and into the Emerald Dream so we can protect the seed and all that, from a dramatic point of view and a character-building point of view, it's pretty obvious why that has happened. Um, and they, they all but say it out loud, right? It's so that... You know, very, very soon, I would predict at the end of this expansion, like, I would predict as the climax of this expansion, honestly, at the very latest next expansion, the Night Elves are going to get a new home. It's going to be the world tree that is growing in the Dragon Isles right now, just like most people thought when they saw this map. It's going to be here. <laughs> right like this is a world tree space right here we've all been saying it i said it in a very 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 early video and i was not the only one saying it by any means like you know there is going to be a world tree here in the dragon isles and i think that's awesome i think that's great i think it's going to happen at the end of this expansion and when it happens malfurion's going to come back like and what that does is it gives when when that when that tree grows and the night elves get a uh, a home back a lot of things are going to happen one it will be the climax of a storyline that started at the beginning of BFA but kind of really started like way back at the end of Warcraft 3 um you know and I think that's brilliant. That's gonna, there's going to be some catharsis there. Obviously, the, the kind of the catharsis comes from, like, the redemption. Not the redemption, but, the, like, the setting of things right after BFA and the events of BFA. More than that, clearly, there's going to be a beautiful moment with all of the Night Elf souls. Like, I would love to see the Night Elf souls literally kind of living in the tree. I would love to see them hanging out in the tree and not like living in everyday life, but being like guardians and stuff in the, in the branches, right? Just watching over it. I think that would be incredible. But at the very least, I think we'll see them appear and be like, yeah, we are protecting this place sort of thing. You know, something like that. So there's this amazing thing where like all of those souls that died in the burning of Teldrassil, they are in this new home as well. So it's going to be this incredible moment for night elves. Uh, yeah, maybe there'll be wisps. Yeah. Um, it's going to be this incredible moment for Night Elves. And a, a moment that I think it will have been worth waiting for, honestly. I know a lot of like Night Elf players are angry and upset that they've had to go through so much trauma and stuff like that. And yeah, fine, whatever. I'm not going to argue with you. For me, that's an interesting story. But like this moment of catharsis when you get a new home is going to be huge. You get, you're going to get a whole new capital city. It's going to be really, really cool. And that is something for the Night Elf, like, 
race in World of Warcraft. It's something for Night Elf players to celebrate, and it's something for all the Night Elves in the game to celebrate, and for Tyrande to celebrate, but it's also tying up Tyrande's arc as well. Tyrande's arc that has been, you know, really happening since about Legion time. Um, and, you know, that's, again, another multiple, multiple uh, expansion arc that is going to kind of come to a nice close there. And what the Malfurion situation does is it gives her a personal moment because Malfurion will come back then as well. So, you know, it'll be like all the Night Elves are celebrating. Everyone's really happy because they've got like this new uh, home in the Dragon Isles, which is a banging fucking place to have a home. Awesome stuff. And then, you know, Tyrande, on top of that, will get a beautiful personal moment with the return of Fal uh, Malfurion as well. And that's clearly what they're doing. That's clearly what they're building up to. And I think it's going to be lovely. And there'll be a moment where Ysera goes back to the Shadowlands and uh, Marithra becomes the Aspect. And that's going to be really cool as well. I think it's going to be fantastic. Whatever the theories, and we made a whole video on this, like where will the Night Elves' new home be? Clearly it's going to be in the Dragon Isles, right? And, and so that's the thing. Malfurion's... And, and I think this is very, very clear from the questing as well, uh, which is the important thing, like linking back to the subject that I'm talking about here. I think it's incredibly clear from the questing that Malfurion's, like, swap with Ysera is incredibly temporary. Like, as in, I'm not sure it's going to outlast this expansion temporary. Like, I, I'm certain Malfurion will be back before Sylvanas and Anduin. Not sure if Malf is coming back so soon. Would be a bit cheap when the cinematic and Tyrande are so dramatic. Ah. Uh... No, I, I don't think so. I think, that, like, so the main thing that Tyrande is upset about in the cinematic is she's just like, this is the thing. Even in the cinematic, in the cutscene, the in-game cutscene, she's not like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm never going to see you again. Like, it's, the emotion more comes from, god, I mean, she says it, right? I'm so tired. It's just one fucking thing after another. You know? And now, and now fucking this. Right? Like, it's just one, like, it's not, when she's saying goodbye to Malfurion, it's not like, oh my god, we're never going to see each other again. This is like tragic, I'm losing my husband. It's like, oh, jeez, just fucking hell. Seriously? Are you fucking kidding me? Just another fucking thing? Like, she says it. She says it herself. So it doesn't feel like a, that big a goodbye, honestly. You know, and she's lived most of her life without him, let's be real. So it's something that they're both quite used to. And Malfurion says, you know, like, ah, oh, love isn't a problem. You know, that's the one thing that definitely will injure. Yeah, Malfurion loves his naps, and who can blame him for that? So there's a cinematic that plays in the quest line where they plant the seed in the ground. But then there's a cutscene further on in the quest line which is an in-game cutscene. It's not a cinematic, it's an in-game cutscene. But the, those are, like, honestly getting quite difficult to tell apart from the cinematics in a lot of places. Uh, where she's just like, I'm so tired. Fucking great line as well. I know I keep coming back to that line, but that line is so awesome. It's, like, so great. And the voice actor does it so well, and the animation is so good. And it's just, it's just a great line because, yeah, man, the Night Elves, they're just, like, so fucking tired. When, this, when the quest line first came to light and, you know, I watched it on Wowhead and stuff like that, and I said I watched it in context, but, you know, I was skipping through the questing because, you know, you do, don't you? And I, I said at the time that I thought it was quite cheap and that, you know... More than anything, I thought it cheapened Ysera's big return in Shadowlands. I don't feel like that so much now. Now I've actually played through the quests. It made a lot more sense in the moment, in context. I feel like, uh, whether you like it or not, some of the criticism around it when it first hit Wowhead was at best unfair, at worst wrong. Like just wrong. I feel like uh, I'm, I'm kind of sold on it, and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I, he found a big bag of Blizz Bucks at his doorstep again. Well, genuinely, yeah, I mean... <laughs> no, I, I just, I really enjoyed the quest line, and 
dramatically, the things that happened in that quest line worked for me. There were some really nice character moments. It was a genuinely fun little adventure. Um, and it's, it's very, very clear from that whole quest line, but particularly from the, the bits involving Tyrandra and Malfurion, that the end game for this, for this arc and this storyline, is obviously the tree growing and Malfurion coming back. And honestly, I think that is likely to happen at the end of this expansion. I think it's likely to happen, you know, in like the epilogue to this expansion. I will put that, I put a money on that now. I'm not going to because that would be against terms of service probably. But, you know, sportsman's bet, I'm betting you that the, the night elves have a new home before 11.0. Before, before uh, whatever the next expansion is launches. So I'm not counting pre-patch in that. I'm talking about launch day of the next expansion. I bet the tree is grown and the night elves are in there. Uh, there is a stay a while and listen dialogue. Um, let's go and have a look at it. Where's Tyrande looking at here? Where's she looking out to? It's not random. She's not looking out to a random, like, area here. She's very specifically looking out into this big area that we all think is going to be the, uh, the new tree, right? <laughs> like, I don't think they're being very subtle about it, right? Uh, you know, she's looking, she's very specifically looking to here where we think the tree is going to be growing. Uh, and let's see if there's any uh, stay a while and listen stuff going on here. can almost feel it growing, can't you? He would want to be here with me. The Shadowlands become ever more difficult to reach, and yet there he remains. We have lost so much, Ysera, and still I am asked to sacrifice. Malfurion's love for you endures beyond the Veil, and when the time comes, he will be there at your side again. I promise. But when? When will my people see their home restored? When will we know peace like we did before? Know this. I may not be the aspect of dream any longer, but I swear I will see the fruition of all our work. I trust you, my dear friend. And I long to see it with my own eyes. Ysera's new model is banging as well. Oh, off she goes. Yeah, so that, that puts like a, a bit more context into it for sure. I don't know, man. I, I'm fine with it. I'm happy with it. I think it's, I think it's a nice storyline now. And I, I say that as someone who was a bit skeptical about it at first when it first came out. I must have missed that cinematic questing. I'll have to look it up. Oh, well, you know, let's take the moment just to show it to you now. Here's the cinematic and let's watch it. Oh, good old Laced. This seed is everything. So many beloved souls entrusting their fate their hopes to us. Are we certain it will be safe? Come. Here, by Elune's grace, this gift will be kept hidden. You're not wrong, From Lotris. Those who uh, would wish I'll, it I'll, harm. I'll talk about that in a sec. Yet the time will come when it must leave the cradle of the dream and take its place in our world. And when it does, its protection will fall to us. My beloved Kaldorai. All you have suffered, all you have given, 
will not be in vain. This I swear to you. I love the Velen sigh there, but it's like uh, a... What is ironic. it, my love? Just a feeling that this time will be different. Leon, awesome to see you, my friend. Uh, and great question. No, there isn't. Um, I know, because I checked. <laughs> when uh, we did the quest line, as part of this quest line, you go into the Emerald Dream. And it's the bit at the end of the Emerald Dream uh, where you go to at the end of the, night, uh, at the, end of the first raid in Legion. And, I sp and they do specifically take you into the cave. There's like a thing you need to pick up in the cave where the Void Seed was growing before. Uh, and it's not there anymore. There's a, like a blooming green bush in its place. So they want you to see that. <laughs> they specifically took you in there. You know, like in a purpose-built area for it. You know, this part of the zone, I have no doubt, has been built with the new tree in mind, right? I really like the idea of it being in the Dragon Isles because Dragon Isles is so great. If this had turned out to be a shit expansion, I'd be like, oh, don't put it in the Dragon Isles. But so far, Dragon Isles is an absolute banger, and that makes me a lot happier to have it in the Dragon Isles, honestly. Uh, so yes, it is growing in the Emerald Dream right now at the moment, uh, but um, it's linked to this part of the world, specifically. This is where um, the Primalists came to, where we had to try and stop them getting to. Um, uh, at the end of that quest line. It's definitely going to grow here. Like, I'm certain it's going to grow here. I, I thought it was probably going to grow here anyway, but I'm literally certain of it now. I can't, you know, I mean, she's literally looking here, talking about it. Um, yeah. And like I say, I'd be surprised if it doesn't happen by the end of the expansion.